Hi, it's The Wire. It's Monday morning, September 16th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Canelo Crawford. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Canelo this weekend beat Edgar Berlanga, right? So he's in the news. People saw the third round knockdown off a Canelo left hook, right? Understand Canelo fights out of an orthodox dance. Well, let's tempt fate here and let's actually talk about Canelo against Crawford. Let me explain why at one point I thought Crawford had an excellent chance in the fight. Maybe he does. Right, let's talk about the math of the fight. Um, understand the risk is all yours, right? We're just talking about trends, patterns, tendencies, uh, the fact that Crawford's approach is extremely technical. So what I want people to do here is to look at one of Canelo's best moments. It's the heaviest weight class in which Canelo has won a title. It's the very end. The last two punches Canelo lands against Kovalev. Right now, the first punch is Canelo's signature punch. It's his left hook, and he throws it from an odd angle. In other words, Canelo can throw this punch from his waist. He gets maximum leverage. The trajectory of the punch is a little bit unpredictable. He has what I call ring coverage on the punch. He can actually generate power and land the punch several feet from him. Right? The punch doesn't dissipate in power and he's in a competitive fight. It's highly competitive. Uh, if you doubt that, all I ask is that you rewatch the fight. It's a highly competitive fight. Kovalev is keeping him guessing by moving. But as we get into the later rounds, both fighters slow down a bit. Canelo lands a hellacious left hook that depletes Kovalev. Right, Kovalev, unfortunately for him, is over by the ropes. Right, it's bad positioning. He gets hit with this left hook. Is weakened to the point where Canelo's able to literally change his stance, walk over, take a step over to Kovalev, and finish the diminished Kovalev with a straight right hand that is pinpoint on Kovalev's chin. Right, Kovalev then crumbles to the canvas. That fight is over. Canelo has taken Kovalev's 175-pound title. The division's important because it shows how big Canelo's punch is. It's big enough to stop a light heavyweight champion. Right? Well, let's make a few points if you're fighting Canelo, how do you keep his left hand busy? Canelo can't throw that left hook if he's using that left for defense. So who can tie up Canelo's left hook? And the answer is a mobile southpaw, right? Because that southpaw's jab hand, that southpaw's right hand would line up with Canelo's left hook. If the southpaw threw a jab, that jab would not only help the southpaw generate enough volume to win the round on the judges scorecards, right? And this is one of the mistakes Berlanga makes. 
He doesn't fight enough to have a chance to win on the scorecards. His strategy is all or nothing. Either he's going to get a stoppage or he's going to lose the fight by several rounds. I believe a southpaw like a Terrence Crawford would be trying to win rounds however he can. Right? So he would understand you have to be active with Canelo. Right? So just understand a southpaw who knows how to pump a jab, who could keep Canelo's left hand busy, might be able to dissipate the power in Canelo's left hook, might be able to take away the suddenness of Canelo's left hook, right? Might be able to force Canelo to back away from the pocket to avoid getting hit with the jab. Right? Let's also talk about movement. A technician would realize that they want to be moving away from Canelo's jab. So a southpaw with a good jab and mobility would want to pump a jab at Canelo while moving to their left. Right? Understand too, because Canelo and he moved well against Berlanga, but that's a comparative situation, right? Berlanga doesn't move that well, right? Uh, if Canelo were in against a fighter who moves better than Berlanga, understand that fighter would want to keep that movement advantage and not neutralize it by being over by the ropes, right? If you're going to move, you need space to move to. Right? You don't want to be caught up on the ropes against a guy who wants you to slow down so he can land one of boxing's best punches, that left hook. Right, Understand, too, if you're pumping a jab, a right jab, on Canelo, that's going to decrease the chances that Canelo, one of boxing's better body punchers, is going to be able to use his signature punch to hit you in the body. Let's also pause here. I'm using Terrence Crawford's name. We understand Crawford was at 147. He jumped up to 154. But that's still two weight classes below Canelo. And at 154, Crawford, who had a knockout streak, did not get a stoppage against Madrimov. Right? Well, I need for folks to stop for a second and realize there are other mobile southpaws in the game who I believe would be a threat to Canelo. One of them just fought a masterpiece and has already fought Canelo. And that's middleweight champion Arislandi Lara. Folks, I know we prefer offense to defense. I get it. But if you saw that Lara... Danny Garcia fight. My goodness, how did Lara get Garcia, who's a mid-range hooker, two-handed, to drop his volume that much? Right? It's because Lara, a southpaw, who has remade himself. This is a rarity in boxing. Right? He used to be a mover. Now he's a KO artist. Look at his current KO streak. And most of them are off straight lefts, right? A guy like 41-year-old Lara would understand movement because he used to be a mover. And he'd be able to keep Canelo busy, as he did the first time they fought, with a right jab, right? I think that's a fascinating fight now. Simply because the knock on Lara during the first fight was that he didn't stay around the pocket enough. Understand, that's an old Lara. Current Lara is a knockout puncher who would want to try to knock out Canelo with a straight left. 
which he'd be able to time because the way he'd be generating volume in the fight would be with his right jab. Understand, too, you have another middleweight champion who's a southpaw, Janabek. Right now, Janabek is also a knockout puncher, right? Janabek is a little bit of a weight bully. In fact, he couldn't fight his last fight because his body reacted to him cutting weight, right? Both Janabek and Lara at 168 are a bit of an open question. Right? If Janabek were to fight Canelo, he too has a lethal, it's one of boxing's most lethal straight lefts. Right? Just understand, because Canelo, an orthodox fighter, has a left hook as his signature, as his go-to move, right? It's his equivalent of Kareem sky hook. Because that's his go-to move, you have to look at southpaws and you have to ask the question, can a southpaw with their offhand do enough to dampen Canelo's left hook by keeping him busy, by forcing him to use his left to block jabs, right? Or simply by forcing Canelo to realize that he wants to keep that left hook, which he has out up front, free, so a jab might lead Canelo to actually taking a step backward and to not be close enough where the left hook is more unexpected. Right now, let's talk about the right hand. I believe Crawford, math-wise, would be able to keep Canelo busy with the same jab. It's the same jab that he threw against Errol Spence, a southpaw. Right? Crawford has a mobile jab. Right? I believe Crawford would be able to keep Canelo busy, right? To dampen Canelo's best punch, his left hook by throwing a right jab, and I believe Crawford, who is mobile, would be able to move away, right? Movement is key here, from Canelo's left hook. In other words, he's shooting a jab, he's moving to his left, and I believe Crawford would be able to time power shots with his left. So let's talk about Canelo's right hand. It's lethal. But here's the key. If Canelo throws that right hand, it takes him out of position to throw the left hook. In other words, if you can time Canelo's right hand, which is accurate, right, but he uses it to close. If you can time Canelo's right hand, and if you can block it or dodge it, you actually have a split second to come back with your own counter. And if you're smart enough to be moving away from Canelo's left hook, understand, your jab would switch off that left hook if Canelo goes to the straight right hand. If you can dodge it, you then have, it's not, an open window, but let's just say you have a moment to come back with something strong. Right, so I thought, you know what? Crawford, who is ambidextrous, and let me point out, that's controversial in boxing. You have a whole school of the sport, right? Ben Davison, the guy who's assisting Anthony Joshua right now, does not believe in ambidexterity. He believes, as do many, that you want to always be at your best. If you switch hands, then you are necessarily relying on your offhand for power. 
Now, I couldn't disagree more. I'm just telling you the secret to fighters like Marvin Hagler was that Hagler, who would come out as a southpaw, could switch to his right hand, right? He gives away the Ray Leonard fight by coming out the first two rounds right-handed. Let's remember that, right? I think with guys who are ambidextrous, and I'm telling you, I watched Andre Ward's career for years and did not know whether he was right-handed or left-handed. Right, that opens the door to a lot of possibilities. The fact that Crawford is ambidextrous, the fact that in the middle of a fight against Kell Brook, Crawford could change the hand he's fighting with and throw off an opponent, right, to me opens the door to a whole new set of angles. Right, so just to understand, a southpaw with a right jab would be able to possibly confuse Canelo as that southpaw switches stances. Right, let me say too that a lot of Canelo's game is based on the idea of him fighting a righty. So understand what a beautiful punch Canelo's left hook is. Canelo at times allows that left hook to take him out of the pocket. He follows the punch, right? He'll load up on a left hook, then he throws it, then he keeps going, right? What that does against the righty is it takes him away from a Berlanga right hand because he's already rolling away from the right. Well, understand, if he throws the left hook and he allows himself to roll against the southpaw, he'd be rolling into that southpaw's dominant hand. Right? Let me add another fighter in the mix. Now, this guy's interesting because I believe he could beat Canelo fighting out of an orthodox stance. But he himself, believe it or not, is actually a southpaw. That jab he throws is actually his dominant hand. And that's Hamza Shiraz. Right now, a Hamza Shiraz, if he can fight left-handed, and most of these guys can. In other words, the guys who switch, Oscar De La Hoya, same thing, right? Oscar's jab hand was actually his dominant hand. The guys who switch can actually switch back. Now, if that's the case with Shiraz, Shiraz could start the fight like Hagler started against Ray Leonard, right? Inverted. Well, inverted from his already inverted stance. So he could come out with a right jab, keep Canelo's left hook busy. Then if he hurt Canelo and wanted to confuse Canelo, he could then switch to an orthodox stance. Right, folks, I'm telling you, that's devastating. If you can hurt the guy. The catch with the ambidextrous people this includes Fury, is the footwork, right? A good ambidextrous guy has to know how to move his feet when he's in the inverted position. I believe Terrence Crawford does. So a Crawford fight against Canelo would have Crawford come out as a southpaw. I believe Crawford has looked at the film and Crawford understands this, right? I believe Crawford knows the math of the fight, knows that Canelo's real punch is his left hook, even though Canelo's in an orthodox stance, and understands that while Canelo's pinpoint with the right hand, 
Canelo, when he throws that right, is out of position to throw the left hook. So I believe Crawford would make the same deal with the devil that Berlanga made. Right? And he would say, okay, I'm going to guard against, I'm going to prioritize dealing with Canelo's left hook. If Canelo starts throwing right hands, I'll just have to accept that and try to keep my head low and keep vigilant while being prepared to counter Canelo's right hand. Right? That's the catch. You have to get Canelo's left off his waist. You can't be low volume like Berlango was in the first round. Right? You need to force Canelo to use that left to deal with your jab, to block punches. Right, You have to get Canelo off his spot. Meanwhile, you have to set things up so you can load up with your own lefts. Right, Looking at Canelo, I wonder why fighters don't not only go to their left, go to Canelo's right, but then try to crowd Canelo on the right side. I believe Crawford would try to do that. Now the problem simply is I was watching the Madrimov fight and Crawford looked like he was fighting in the wrong weight division. Crawford's relying on jabs a lot in that Madrimov fight. I think Madrimov at 154 fought the wrong fight and didn't try to crowd and roughhouse Crawford. I believe the best punch in any fight between Crawford and Canelo is Canelo's left hook. Right? To me, it's heavier than anything Crawford throws. Also, Crawford, closer. I'm not here to say otherwise. But Crawford isn't the dramatic puncher that Janabek is. You need to know that name. Or that Lara in his 40s is. Right? So Crawford would need to methodically beat Canelo. It wouldn't be the big punch, the one opportunity where he's moving, he has the advantage because Canelo's foot speed doesn't match Crawford's foot speed. Right? Don't be fooled by the Madrimov fight because Madrimov actually has very good foot speed. As I've said here before, and I know it's a controversial statement, subscribers have let me know in the comment section. I've said before, I consider Madrimov to be a better athlete than Crawford. Well, I consider Crawford to be a better athlete than Canelo. But Canelo's the bigger puncher. I believe Canelo himself understands Crawford would be moving away from his left toward his right hand. I believe Canelo, who isn't great at cutting off the ring, but who did move his feet against Berlanga, I believe Canelo would be able to read that and would understand that Crawford doesn't hit as hard as him so I believe Canelo would take chances against a Crawford that he was hesitant to take against a Berlanga. Right? So I think Canelo would be in there throwing right hands, knowing it takes him out of position to throw his signature left hook. But I believe Canelo's math would be that all he has to do is land a few right hands to slow down 35, 36-year-old Terrence Crawford. Right, so let's just say the opening rounds of Canelo Crawford would be interesting. I believe sooner or later, weight would take over. Right, but let's just say that's an intriguing fight because as Canelo has gotten older, Canelo now is relying on his left hook a lot more. Right? Also, some of you believe, I don't believe this, but some of you do. Right? Some of you believe that Canelo is not the puncher he once was. Right? The reason I don't believe that is simply because um, of the 
Kovalev stoppage, right? And the fact that Canelo was able to catch up with people like Caleb Plant, he was able to stop Rocky Fielding in Fielding's 168-pound weight class, right? But let's just say I do believe that Canelo, as he's gotten older, same with Lara, has become much more efficient. And Canelo knows when he has a fight against a young fighter, Munguia, Berlanga, already won, right? Canelo is a guy who knows that he can outbox these guys and doesn't need the stoppage. And I believe Canelo has made a decision that in fights that aren't close, fights where he has a lead, the Ryder fight, for example, he's made a decision that he's not going to go for the knockout late. Now, I believe that's different if he's fighting a Terrence Crawford and the fight hangs in the balance in the ninth round. Then I believe Canelo would try to close the show, right? I would take Canelo, well, in fact, let me rephrase this. I would expect Canelo to win the fight against Crawford now, right? How I bet it would depend on the odds. If you tell me that I'm getting better than a plus 200 on the Crawford side of the play, folks, I'll have some money on the Crawford side of the play, hedging it with Canelo by stoppage. If the Canelo by stoppage prop isn't viable because of the odds being offered, then I'd have to pick rounds, right? In terms of... Uh, when I think Canelo gets the stoppage. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. A mobile southpaw who can move away from Canelo's left hook and who could keep Canelo's left hand busy with jabs and who could throw enough jabs to win slow rounds. Isn't that what Crawford just did against Padrimov? Right? Would have a chance against Saul Alvarez. Right, Alvarez does have a right hand, he is two-handed. But if he starts throwing the kind of straight rights that ended the Kovalev fight, um, he's not in a position to knock you out with his left hook. In other words, you already have moved Canelo off plan A to plan B. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.